Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to work through 22 different examples of solving two-step equations. Now, solving two-step equations is very similar to solving one-step equations. We obviously have two operations that we're going to need to undo because the goal, just like one-step equations, is to isolate the variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to decide which, ver which operation to undo first as well as using the properties of equality and inverse operations. So in this first example, you can see here we have 3x plus 1. So what's happening, what operations are being applied to this x is that it's being multiplied by 3 and it's being added by 1. All right, so we need to undo multiplication and we need to undo addition. Now, when we're solving equations or two-step equations, we're always going to undo what we call the reverse order of operations. So we're going to undo addition and subtraction before we undo multiplication and division. Because if you remember, the order of operations, we always, always when we're simplifying an expression, we always multiply and divide it before we add and subtract it. So for solving, we're just going to do the reverse process. So to undo addition of 1 to this variable, I'm just going to subtract a 1. And again, we're going to do our properties of equality to subtract a 1 on both sides. Then I now obtain a 3x is equal to 15, where now I can apply the division property of equality by dividing a 3 on both sides. So therefore, x is equal to 5. And again, you can see by using one operation, we then got it to a one-step equation, where then again, we can use our inverse operations. In the next example, you can see that the 2 and the 3x are just rearranged. But again, from our last video of solving one-step equations, you can see that we can just rearrange those back again. I could just rewrite this as 3x plus 2 if I wanted to. Or I could just use the properties of equality or the inverse operations just from there. So again, you can see that, that since that is a positive 2, uh, you can think of that as adding that to a 3x, right? Because if you were to rewrite this, it'd be a 3x plus 2 equals 14. So a lot of students sometimes get that confused. They don't really realize that you that when you have a 2 plus 3x, remember, it's the same thing as 3x plus 2. So you're really adding a 2. That's why we're going to undo adding by subtracting that. And then we get 3x is equal to 12. Divide by 3, x is equal to 4. All right, in this next example, you can see I have my variable now on the right-hand side, which again, that's perfectly fine. We just want to look at what operations are being applied to our variable and how do we undo them. So here we have a multiplication, it's not subtracted, right? It's a negative three, but it's being multiplied by our h, and then we're adding a 20. So again, just like we did before, I'm gonna divide by 20 first. I'm sorry, subtract 20 first. That gives me a negative 18 equals a negative 3h. Now to undo multiplication of a negative three, I'll divide by a negative three on both sides. That gives me six equals h. Um, in this next example, you can see that we have now introduced some decimals. But again, it's really the same process that we have that we did before with integers. Um, you can see that my variable y is being multiplied by a negative, which is really being multiplied by negative 1. And then I'm adding a 7.1. So I'm just going to subtract a 7.1 here. All right. And that is going to give me now a, let's see, negative 7 minus 7. So that's going to be negative 16.6. Point 0.6 equals a negative y. And then to undo multiplication of negative y, I'll just divide by a negative 1. It gives me a 16.6 is equal to positive y. And again, you could always rearrange that, right? You could rewrite that as y equals 16.6 if you like to. Um, in the next example, now we're going to introduce some fractions. Now, typically, when we're dealing with decimals and we're dealing with fractions, I like to avoid operations with decimals and fractions. However, for these two for these two examples, they're rather simple enough. Like you can hopefully can add and subtract um, with these decimals as well as with these fractions. But on the later examples, I'll show you some tips on how to do it without fractions or decimals. But in this case, let's just follow our order of oper our reverse order of operations. We have three L right, or we have L, which is being multiplied by three and having been added by one half. So I'm just going to subtract a one half on both sides, all right? Now we do that, I get three L is equal to seven eighths minus one half. Now, you might say, well, I can't subtract a seven eighths minus one half because they're not like terms, right? And that is true. You have to have like terms, meaning they have to have the same denominator. So remember though, if you have one half, if you multiply by a four over four, that is going to produce a 4 eighths. Now, it's important about 4 eighths is 4 eighths is the same thing as 1 half. Agreed? But 4 eighths has a denominator of 8. And that's very important because now 
I can go ahead and subtract these two fractions. So if I just replace the 1 half as 4 eighths, then I can apply the operations here. So I have 3L is equal to a 3 eighths. And then you could divide by 3 on both sides. Or if that gets a little confusing for you, you could also do 3L equals 3 eighths. Remember, you can multiply by 1 third, which is the reciprocal. And therefore, you get L is going to equal, those would multiply out, so you get 1 over 8. All right, in the next example, again, we have another fraction. Um, but again, I'm, I, I don't need to get rid of this. At least I don't feel like in this point. Because the first thing I want to do is undo addition and subtract it. And I can see now my variable is being subtracted by 3. So I'm just going to add a 3 to both sides. Then that gives me a 1 fifth is equal to 20. Now, if I want to do undo, there's an x in there. <laughs> if I want to undo a 1 5th x, that means I'm going to multiply by a 5 on both sides, right? Or multiply by the reciprocal 5 over 1, which is just 5. So x is now equal to 100. All right, now let's go and get into some, oh, do I have more? 4, 5, 6. Ah, let's keep on going. I was like getting a little short there. Um... Question number seven here. So in this case, um, again, this everything is kind of getting rearranged here. But again, like if we just think about this, we have our a over fifth that's being added by negative 18, which is really, again, the same thing as a over five minus 18 is equal to two. These are the exact same equations. So sometimes if you need to understand the inverse operations, sometimes it's just helpful to rearrange things. But hopefully you just add an 18 to both sides. So then you get a over five is going to equal 20. And now I can just multiply by five on both sides. And you can say a is gonna equal 100. Now in this next example, um, you could go ahead, let's do, here, let's do one where I'm gonna use the fraction operations. And then the next one, I will get rid of the fraction operation. Whenever the fractions, you know, whenever I have like one fraction or two fractions that have the same denominator, Typically, it's not going to be that bad to go ahead and just use your inverse operations. Um, like, for instance, here, if I subtract 1 fourth here on both sides, I know that I can subtract 3 fourths from 1 fourth, right? So therefore, I get c over 3 is equal to 2 fourths. Now, 2 fourths is the same thing as 1 half, but I'll just keep it there because now all I need to do to isolate my variable c is being divided by 3. So to undo that, I'm going to multiply by 3 on both sides. And therefore, you can see that it's going to give us a 2 times 3 is 6 divided by 4. So that will give us a C is equal to 6 over 4, which you can simply just divide into a 3 halves. Now, if you do not like fraction operations, you can always just get rid of fractions. And the way to get rid of fractions is to find your least common denominator. The least common denominator is going to be the smallest number that your denominators evenly divide into. So in regards to 2 and 3, you can say that the smallest number that 2 and 3 both evenly divide into is 6. So I can say that LCD is 6. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply everything times 6. So when I multiply 6 times 1 half, what I get is 6 times 1 half. I'll write this one out so you can kind of see how it looks. But typically you don't need to show this much work. But you multiply the 6 times everything. Now 6 times 1 half is 6 times 1 divided by 2 is going to be 3. 6 times r is 6r divided by 2, which is a 3r. And 6 times 2 thirds, that's going to be 12 divided by 3, it's going to be a plus 4. Okay? But now you can see that I'm in a two-step equation, right? Or now I've gone to a two-step equation without any fractions. So the multiplying by the LCD eliminates our fractions. So I'll divide by... I'm sorry, I'll subtract to 4, so that's negative 1 equals 3r, divide by 3, and r equals a negative 1 third. All right, in our next example here, I have um, x divided by 8 plus 4 equals 3. So let's see here, my variable x is being divided by 8 and added by 4. So I will subtract to 4. Why it's doing that to me? Subtract 4 on both sides, so I get x equals 8 equals a negative 1. Then I will multiply by an 8 on both sides. So x equals a negative 8. Uh, in the next example here, I have a my x is being multiplied by negative 1 and subtracted by 4. So I'll add a 4 on both sides. Negative x equals, oops, what am I doing? Yeah, negative x equals 15. Divide by negative 1. 
x equals a negative 15. All right, now let's go ahead and head back up to question number 12. So again, number 12, you can see how everything's kind of coming up again. It's a lot of the same operations. Undo addition and subtraction first, then we're gonna undo multiplication and division. Um, so here we have, we're gonna add a 16 to both sides. So a over three, let's see, that's gonna equal 41. And then uh, to undo dividing by three, I will multiply by three. So let's see, 41 times two is going to be um, 82. And then if you add one more, that'd be 123. Okay, or you could just do four times three is three, and four or three times 40 is 120. Um, in this case, everything's just being rearranged, but again, it's really the same operation. Like my variable t is being divided by two and added by three. So I'll subtract a three on both sides, three equals t over two, and then I'll multiply by two on both sides. Okay, so I get six is equal to t, and you can just rearrange that t is equal to six. I don't know why that's not letting me do that. Um, for the next one here is you can see now my variable t is being multiplied by negative 10, added by three, so I will subtract a three on both sides. Negative 27 equals negative 10t, divide by negative 10. Okay, and then you could always simplify this, or we could also you know, if you needed to, go ahead and rewrite things as decimals um, if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave this as fractions. But you could also rewrite that as 2.7 as well. Um, minus the 10, yeah. The next one here, I have one plus t divided by eight divided by negative seven. So again here, we're just going to subtract the one. So I have t over eight is equal to negative seven minus one is negative eight then multiply by an eight on both sides, t is equal to a negative 64. And then an example here, it looks very similar um, to our problem in question number 14, but you can see now really we're just subtracting by negative three. So again, my only difference here is I'm just gonna add the three, right? So therefore that gives me negative 21 equals a negative 10t, and now you're gonna be dividing by negative 10, and therefore you're gonna get a 21 tenths is equal to Okay, and again, you could simplify that into a decimal if you needed to. Um, over here, we have 2x minus 9 is equal to 7, so I'll add a 9 to both sides. 2x equals 16, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 8. Over here, you can see we have some decimals. Now again, you could easily do decimal um, operations. They're really not that bad, and especially even if you had a calculator, they wouldn't even be, um, they would be a, they definitely wouldn't be as bad. But again, kind of like with the fractions, um, I think it's a little bit easier when you are, can do operations with integers rather than fractions. And the same thing with decimals. So what I'm gonna kind of do is the same real thinking as what we did for the fractions is I'm just gonna multiply by 10, okay? So multiplying by 10 is actually going to move the decimal point over one for each of these problems. So now my new equation is 12 is equal to 24 minus 6x. Now this is a lot easier of a problem to work with, right? I can just subtract the 24. Then I get negative 12 equals a negative 6x. Divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6. And 12 over 6, that's going to be 2 is equal to x. And again, you could rearrange that as x equals 2. But for a lot of students, that just makes a lot more sense. For number 19, again, I'm going to look at the LCD. What is the smallest number that 9 and 18 both divide into? Because this has a de um, denominator of 1. And you can say in this case, the LCD is going to be 18, right? You don't always want to multiply the denominators because 9 goes into 18 and 18 goes into 18. And again, you could not do this if you want to just do fraction operations. But again, I just think it makes the math a lot easier. Now, in this case, I'm just going to multiply here. So 18 times negative 2 ninths, 9 goes into 18 two times, two times negative two is a negative four x. Minus 18 times four is 64. And then 18 times seven eighteenths is just gonna equal a seven. Then I will add a 64 to both sides here. And I get a negative four x is going to equal, let's see, a 71. Now, then I'm going to divide by a negative four and therefore, x is equal to a negative 71 fourths. Now, again, you could put the negative in the denominator. You could put it in front, or you could put it in the numerator. It doesn't really matter. You always want to look to see if you can simplify this, but there's nothing really I can see that I can further simplify that fraction, so I'll just leave it as that. 
Um, the next example here is again, I have some fractions. Let's just get rid of those fractions. So the LCD here um, is going to be, let's see, three times five is 15. They don't have any other uh, multiple for that. So I'll just multiply by 15. All right, so let's see what we get here. So 15 times two thirds, three goes into 15 five times. Five times two is going to be 10. Five goes into 15 three times. Three times three M is going to be a nine M. Five goes into 15 three times. Three times 31 is going to be a 93. So I'll subtract by 10. Nine M equals 83. And then I'll divide by a nine. And I guess I have another fraction here. Um, and again, you just want to kind of see, like, does 9 divide into 9, 83? Well, no. I know that 9 do evenly divides into 90, right? But so it's not going to divide into 83, and there's no way that I can simplify that further. Um, last example, again, let's get rid of these decimals here. So I'm going to multiply everything by 10. That gives me 13 plus 5x equals a negative 34. Now I can subtract a 13 on both sides. 5x is, let's see here, negative 34 minus 13 is a negative 47. And then I'll divide by 5. And again, doing with some problems that do not evenly work. So that's going to be a negative 47 fifths. Now, if I multiply this last equation by um, 10, that's just going to move the decimal point over 1, right? So in this problem, actually what I need to do is I need to multiply everything times 100. So therefore, that's going to give me 112 plus 125g equals 862, okay? Now I can subtract 112 on both sides. That will give me 125g is equal to 750. Then I can divide by 125. So g is going to equal 750 divided by 125. Now I just need to think about and say, all right, well, how can I simplify this? If you just think about how many times does 125 go into 720, check that. You can see that 125 times two is 250, and therefore 250 is going to be a, is gonna go into that um, three times. So if you do three times two, that would give you G is going to equal six. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video helped you out for solving two-step equations. Please feel free to check out my multiple other examples that I've covered throughout the years, as well as my next video for solving multi-step equations. Cheers.